Hello, this is MakerJ11, and as promised in the other video, here is going to be the um, more in-depth video on this steam engine that I built. So this engine was built without any machining tools, um, not even a drill press. Um, basically, none of the parts I bought for this engine. I bought a couple of parts for Sterling engines, but no, not this steam engine. Um, some of them I just had laying around for a long time because they're leftovers from um, Sterling engines, etc., etc. Um, so, this is basically my steam engine. Um, it's not too big. It's on a 2x6 um, piece of lumber. It's probably about, oh, I don't know, 20, or uh, probably about a foot long. And, um, yeah, so, just made out of scrap metal and stuff like that. So, I guess we'll start off with the, um, hmm, well, the flywheel. So the flywheel is, um, I actually showed the video how to cast that out of, out of aluminum. I used the lost foam method. So you basically take styrofoam in the shape that you want, and you um, basically bury it in sand, and then you pour the molten aluminum in the, um, where the um, foam is, and the foam melts away instantly, basically, and the metal is left in its place. So that's how I casted this. It's not perfect, as you can see. But it works quite well, and it's actually very balanced. It um, doesn't wobble much. I mean, it's not going at like a thousand RPM or anything, but I mean, it runs just fine. Um, so that's my flywheel. I just drilled a hole in the middle and then tapped a little screw there. Pretty simple. Um, and then um, this is my cam for the uh, for the valve assembly, um, and this is just on a piece of uh, metal steel rod, probably from a VCR or something like that, or probably. A printer, um, and it's on some little bearings there, also probably from a printer, and um, it's got some nice wood supports there. Um, so the cam is basically a piece of square stock that um, I don't even remember what it was from. I got it out of something though. Um, so it's a piece of square brass um, that I cut some square holes in the this steel bracket that I made, and then I soldered on this little um, bit of metal that I made and a little steel roller, which is very similar to this one, probably from either like a uh, maybe a tape cassette player or something like that, I don't remember. But it's a little metal roller there, and that goes on this little um, aluminum um, rod cam that I made, so that um, activates the valve assembly. This, can this little um, push rod, or whatever you'd want to call that, goes down to the valve assembly. We have a little spring here to return it to, so that it follows the cam. So we've got a little removable spring here. So you can see that that just pushes on there. And we've just got a little hole in there that it fits in. And um, you can actually pull this out. And this is just a piece of brass with a hole in it. And that gets all greased up when I put it in there. And that is actually pretty much Basically, the only part I didn't buy it for this engine, though. I bought it for um, displacer rods um, for Sterling engines. So you have this little um, brass t br brass rod, and then have brass tube that p fits perfectly over top of it. So, and it really could have a lot better seal, but I mean it's good enough. It, it I mean the engine runs, so that's what really matters. Um, so that's that, and we have. Um, a hole that goes all the way through right here and there, and it's all soldered together. We have some co some copper tubing that's just soldered on there. I had to flange it out in order to make it big enough to go over the hole. I may actually make this hole in here a little bit bigger. I don't think it's letting quite enough air um, through, so I may make that bigger, or at least wider. Not not so much bigger because then it would cut through and it would be too weak. But I may try to make it a little bit longer, and it may let more air through and make it more powerful. So then we go on to the piston, and that's all just soldered on pieces of steel that I eyeball cut. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm pretty good at that, I guess. Um, so here's the piston, it's just soldered on to another piece of steel that is on a block of wood. And this is a 3 quarter inch copper pipe, and um, yeah, so 3 quarter inch po copper pipe, and the piston is basically, it's basically JB Weld, I think it's the same thing as JB Weld. Um, it is actually, I have it right here, this is the metal epoxy putty, so it takes like five minutes to dry, it's really quick. Um, but, so that is the piston, and I just basically put um, 
grease inside the um, the cylinder, and then I made this into a ball shape, a ball shape, and pushed it down in, and there you go, you've got a piston. So this is actually another one. And then you drill it out and um, everything like that to make it into a real piston. So this is another one that also fits. And that's just got an end, a washer or something soldered on the end. Some random bit of steel. And then we move on to the um, the crank, which is probably, I don't know, that probably took the longest out of any part of this engine to build just because I had to drill all these holes through the steel. So I used um, just a steel bar like this from something. Um, it was like a frame or... I don't remember if it was from a filing, filing cabinet or what, but... Um, so, just a piece of steel. And so I drilled a whole bunch of holes in it, and I actually have a couple extras up here. Um, I made a bunch of these little um, steel things with holes in them. And I used some steel, or um, some brass rods that I had, threaded rods, and I made this. So, as you can see, the notch there is actually has a flat spot so it doesn't rotate on there, and as well as this this rod here, this shaft, so it doesn't, it won't rotate on there. It's pretty, it's very secure. It's not going to pop off just wiggling it. But the nice thing about this is that it's so, so, so adjustable. So if I find my wrench here, wherever I put it, here's my little wrench. So I basically, if I want to move, if I want to make the stroke a little bit longer, all I have to do is I can just um, loosen this one like about a quarter turn, and then tighten this one about a quarter turn, and I can inch the um, inch it out like that, just doing that, and I don't have to take it apart. I don't have to drill more holes or anything like that. I can just do that, and it's now the the stroke is a little bit farther. So it's so easy. And then this is my counterbalance over here. So if it's unbalanced, I can move that out a little bit more. It just works great. So as you can see, it goes for quite a while. So on those nice bearings and everything. And the bearing on here is just um, glued on. Just loop the copper wire around the bearing and glued. So And then my little connector there, I use the same thing for my, ster for my sterling engines. It's these European style terminal blocks. You just take the screws out and you can pop the metal part out and you can get a nice little connector like that. Useful for lots of things. So that is the crankshaft, or the crank, and then um, that's about it. So yeah, I mean, not much else to this engine. Now why I didn't just drill a hole in here is because when I've tried to do that in the past, just drill a stationary hole that can't move, um, it just always ends up bad. I either drill it in the wrong place, or <laughs> so I have to drill multiple holes, and it never works out. It just, just doesn't work. So, I, I've been wanting for a while to make something that's adjustable like this, and this is f the best method I've found so far. So, and it was fairly easy to make. It took me probably an hour to make, maybe two hours. I don't know, but I had to drill a bunch of these. I have a couple extras there because I wasn't sure how much counterweight I would need. So. But yeah, that is, that's the steam engine. So, the little spring just goes in the little hole here. And that just returns it. As you can see, it, just, it adds some friction, but I mean, not a lot. So, it still runs pretty nice. So that is my steam engine. All right, so let's give it a little bit of a run. So turn on the vacuum pump, same refrigerator compressor, and the pressure's building over there, or the vacuum, rather. And there we go, it's off. <coughs> so actually, this, um, so the square part here keeps the um, roller straight, and then this little um, spring here actually keeps the hole in here lined up properly. So if I actually rotate this, it won't run as well. So as you can see there, kind of, Actually, it's kind of like a speed control, I guess. So, <laughs> just because that, that hole in there is rotated, so it's not lined up properly anymore. But, I like it. It works good. So, so I think this valve is really too small for my engine. Just It, it just doesn't seem to let quite enough air through. It also leaks a whole ton. I can feel, well, when it's running on pressure, I can feel a bunch of air just squirting out the ends. 
um, as well as my piston's not very sealed as well. But, um, I mean, it works. It works good enough. I mean, it certainly works good enough for a first steam engine ever. Um, but yeah. And then if you um, if you change the place of this, if you turn it, it'll go the opposite direction. Um, so, and the the crank of the um, piston and the um, cam for the valve are offset 90 degrees, which I believe that that's what they have to be. So, yeah, basically the same same as a Sterling engine. A Sterling engine has to be 90 degrees. The piston and the um, uh, the di the displacer have to be 90 degrees offset. Alright, just for demonstration purposes, I'll show that it actually runs off of my breath. So I'll turn off the pump here, and so now if I blow on the tube. Whew, you really have to blow hard. <laughs> it doesn't go very fast. So, but yeah, it goes in the opposite direction. When you have a pressure, it goes in one direction. And when you have a vacuum, it goes in the other direction, just because the way the timing and everything is set up. Well, basically, it's if you, it's basically like if I put a pressure in here, it's basically like putting a vacuum on here. Same thing, input output doesn't really matter. Um, so just defines the direction and yeah. So yep. So that is how it works. That is about it. I hope this explains any questions. If you have more questions, um, just post them in the comments, and I will get to them when I have a chance. That's about it. Thanks for watching.